Hello, it's David, the creator of Caribulite, and in this uh, presentation I'd like to give you a very short overview of the history uh, of Caribulite, which kind of decisions, engineering decisions we did uh, during the development, and then I will talk about the, the top-level architecture, uh, and then uh, we'll dig into the firmware and software we want to uh, to detail a little bit on the firmware, the FPGA firmware, and the software, and the SMI interface in this presentation. Uh, the top level, uh, top level of the firmware, the uh, component that gets inside the FPGA will be next. And then finally, I will uh, give a short, detailed information about the secondary memory interface that is used in Caribou Light, which is a quite uh, amazing and useful uh, interface. What we needed in Caribulite is a small and self-contained SDR. As you can see here, an SDR contains two main components. There is the RF frontend, this is the first one, that um, captures uh, analog signals uh, or transmits them and then uh, digitizes them and uh, gives these samples to the second part, which is the computer, the baseband. And this baseband has to analyze these signals or uh, on the other side to create uh, digitized signals and transmit it to the RF uh, front end. Uh, the, the communication between them uh, has to be also efficient. Um, so we wanted to make a portable RF board or a self-contained SDR uh, and um, obviously uh, tiny computers, SDR basements, uh, and uh, single board computers, what's called S SBCs, they already exist. We did not want to create a, another single board computer uh, that will facilitate our SDR because we know that Raspberry Pi exists, uh, Jetson Nano exists, and all these platforms are really good they are uh, cost uh, efficient and uh, we want to use them rather to recreate them and to recreate the wheel. Uh, what we did focus on was the RF part, the RF front end part. And this is actually the Caribou light. So in order to uh, make it uh, cost efficient, uh, we decided that at least 70% of its components will be RF components. Uh, not to waste a bill of materials on uh, digital components. You cannot do it without them, but yes, but uh, uh, you need to be uh, to not to put almost any compute in the RF part and to use the compute, good compute that is uh, provided by the uh, third party boards as a as the um, uh, as the baseband, so that was the uh, that these were the goals of the project, and let's see what we did with it. So there are there are many uh, platforms, very good platforms in the market. These are three only three platforms that we uh, that we show here, but there are much more, and all of them are very popular. Uh, there is the Tinzi, which is um, the biggest drawback of Trinzy is the performance and that it doesn't contain, doesn't uh, support Linux. And there is the Jetson on the other side, which is uh, quite expensive, but it's an amazing platform for, uh, for development. Uh, but it is not as popular as the other two. And uh, the question is, which is the best? The obvious answer was Raspberry Pi, but we had a problem Raspberry Pi, um, we don't know, or it doesn't contain, the back then we did not know, that it uh, has a capability to transmit IQ samples. Until we read about SMI, which, uh, which is the secondary memory interface, that actually can transmit uh, lots of uh, hundreds of megabits of per second, which is a good fit for us, because we need 128 megabits of information to be transmitted back and forth from 
the modem to the uh, baseband computer. So once we understood that a Raspberry Pi uh, contains this SMI interface that is not investigated, but that's part of the job to investigate this interface and to give it to the community. Um, this was a easy question. Obviously, Raspberry Pi has everything, has all that is needed. It has a community, it is cheap and affordable. Uh, there are very, very cheap Raspberry Pis and there are also other Raspberry Pis that are more performance oriented and uh, it is uh, proven for SDR applications. People already use it to control and to receive information from SDR play and, um, uh, uh, and other uh, RTL SDRs and so on. So let's continue. Okay, so we chose Raspberry Pi. So on the left side, we have Raspberry Pi 40 pins. On the right side, we have the modem that we was chosen before, 8086, uh, for microchip. And we need a mediator, which is an FPGA. Of course, we wanted the FPGA and all this platform to be open source. So we chose ICE 40. It is very affordable FPGA, uh, and it is very powerful also. Um, so what we need here, which interfaces? One interface is the LVDS interface that is connecting the modem to the FPGA. Uh, the modem and the FPGA, sorry, needs to support it. The other interface is obviously the SMI in order to transmit and receive IQ uh, samples. And then we need to control the FPGA. So we have SPI for that, the native Raspberry Pi SPI, but the Raspberry Pi needs also to program the FPGA. So we have over this SPI, uh, we uh, developed the uh, program interface. Uh, and actually, Caribulai uh, does not contain a, um, a flash, a dedicated flash device inside it that contains the firmware. All the firmware is um, programmed on demand by the Raspberry Pi computer. So next we need to uh, discuss the programming model, which means um, what are the outputs of our program? Uh, how are they used? Why we uh, why we create this output and not the other, and how we are integrating all the other technologies inside this one programming model. As you can see here, the output layer contains static library that you can use it for uh, to develop your own application in C, C++, and other languages. There is the SOAP SDR API that is a very uh, simple API so that many other uh, third party products will interface with Caribou Light. And the, there is also the, the demand for uh, GNU Radio, which is uh, also under development currently. So GR Caribou Light uh, module is something that we will develop. But uh, Caribula does not contain only software, it has firmware, that is the Verilog files that are uh, eventually uh, programmed inside the FPGA, and there is the device trees that define for the Linux operating system which driver to load, and if we want to create our own drivers, we also have to integrate it inside this device tree. And there is the C code mainly C code, some of it is C++, uh, that uh, integrates the FPGA firmware part and the device tree into one CMake project, CMake project, CMake project that uh, once, you, once you compile it, everything is compiled together. So uh, we used YOSIS and XPNR for ICE40 open source uh, toolchain. And then the output of this uh, synthesis and, uh, and mapping and uh, placing is a binary file. This binary file is converted into C and C++ blob uh, and integrated into the code. The same thing happens for the device trees, device tree uh, compiler DTC. 
uh, compiles the, our device tree and then this blob, binary blob, is integrated into C, C++, a one make file project that uses all the inputs, the code, the firmware, and the device trees, integrate them together and create SOAP SDR API, GNU Radio API, and static library. One more uh, most important thing is that everything was developed on Raspberry Pi, which means that uh, all the tool chains, the Verilog tool chain, uh, the device tree tool chain, and the coding uh, environment was in Raspberry Pi with uh, VS Code. And this is quite amazing because uh, we don't, we did not only make it possible to uh, use the Raspberry Pi as a development. Um, environment, easy to use development environment, but we also did it. We developed everything on the Raspberry Pi. So uh, the uh, f firmware development, the uh, synthesis, the place and route, and with NextPNR is happening on the Raspberry Pi, and actually it's happening really fast. Like uh, the Caribou Light firmware, which is not big, but it's it's uh, somewhat complex, you will see in, in a few minutes, uh, is uh, all the synthesis and the placing and routing and programming is happening on the Raspberry Pi in something like 15, min 15 seconds. Uh, and um, the code, of course. And this, is, uh, this makes your Raspberry Pi a one-stop solution for developing, deploying, and testing um, SDR solutions, uh, which is quite uh, um, quite uh, neat. You don't need to change computers. You don't need to change screens. You are working in one environment and you use it. In this um, slide, what we see is the top level architecture of this uh, firmware. Now we are focusing a little bit on the FPGA firmware and the FPGA firmware contains modules. Uh, the three most important modules on the FPGA firmware are the uh, syscontrol, which practically contains some version information on this uh, whole firmware. Uh, the IO control that controls uh, uh, interfaces like uh, IO interfaces like the uh, PMOD connector, LEDs, buttons, configuration, uh, and um, all the RF interfaces, RF control, RF uh, front end control um, uh, discrete uh, signals. And the SMI control. The SMI control is uh, the mediator, the actual mediator between the LVDS, LVDS interface, the low voltage uh, differential signaling interface that is um, communicating with the modem, and the SMI interface that is communicating with the Raspberry Pi. Another interface is the SPI interface that uh, uh, dispatches messages, SPI messages, control, uh, is controlled by SPI messages from the Raspberry Pi uh, and uh, controls the bus that, uh, the bus that define uh, re registers uh, from the SMI control, IO controller and SIS controller. All this information is in GitHub and the uh, opcodes and the messages are defined there. So uh, one more thing is the digital uh, interface, digital uh, clock interface, that is a uh, 125 megahertz clock that is incoming from, from a crystal. In this particular component, in this particular ICE40 uh, chip that we decided to use, there is no PLL, so uh, we needed a, uh, an external clock to provide us with high enough uh, clock source, clock uh, frequency. Uh, that's it for this part. Next, let's talk about the SMI signals. The SMI that stands for a secondary memory interface is 
uh, provided and supported by all the SOCs that are used by uh, Raspberry Pi computers, also the historical ones, and it connects to the ARM core uh, through an AXI bus. And now the external signals of this SMI interface are as follows. First, we have data. Uh, in actual, uh, actually, you have 18 bits of data, but uh, two of the higher bits, the MSBs, most significant bits, uh, they have special usage, and I will show them uh, later what are the special usages. So let's say that the maximum uh, number of data lines that you can use in SMI is 16. Uh, data lines, two bytes. Then you have also six bits of addressing that are very close to the chip selects or slave selects in SPI communication. Then you have the uh, these two lines, OE and WE, or enable and direction. They are uh, depending, their functionality is depending on uh, whether you are using the mode 80 or mode 68 uh, uh, operation uh, configuration. In one of them, OE and WE are two strobes. OE is a strobe for reading operation and WE is a strobe for uh, the uh, uh, writing operation, very similar to SPI. In SPI, this strobing operation is done by the S clock, the serial clock. So here it's not a serial clock, it's a parallel clock. So once this line goes down, you will see it, uh, the data information is latched. So that's how it works. This is the green option, what's called the mode 80. The mode 68, the red option, uh, is a little bit different. There are two bits also, two lines. One of them is enabled and the other one was uh, is uh, direction. So if you want to read information, uh, you put the direction to read. If I'm not mistaken, it's uh, zero. Maybe I'm uh, maybe a mistake. Uh, and, uh, and then once you want to strobe, you are uh, latching the enable. You are putting the enable low. In Caribou Light, we used uh, eight data bits, three bits for addressing. Uh, we used read request and write request signals here. I will just uh, detail them uh, in just a minute. And we used the mode 80 signaling configuration, which means that we have strobing for a, a reading operation and writing operation. So what are these read request and write request? First of all, they are uh, they are shared on data uh, line number 16 and 17. So uh, this, uh, we, uh, this uh, two uh, bits are uh, I, they are not the data lines anymore. We configure them to as an interrupt lines. And these interrupt lines are uh, special interrupt lines that are signaling a, a request by an FPGA. Uh, he raises his hand and he says, okay, I need uh, to tell you something. I, need, I have information, I have uh, um, samples. Uh, in my FIFO, so please request to read them using the OE signal or uh, my write FIFO to the modem is getting empty. Please push to me a little bit more samples using your uh, WE signal. So that's basically the uh, the uh, the uh, operation uh, um, 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 principle of this very, very simple interface. Uh, I must say that in order to uh, decipher this uh, interface and to use it 
very quickly to make it work very quickly uh, uh, we uh, based on wor our work on the uh, excellent articles uh, they are given here so you can of course read them we provide them in our github uh, the linking them and uh, they are really good and uh, thank you very much for this work that you have done it could not be possible uh, caribou light could not be possible without you so now let's uh, look at the standard configuration that we are using and what are the performance capabilities in standard configuration of course we can go higher and we can go lower uh, actually we don't need all this uh, configuration uh, we need to provide 128 bits uh, megabits uh, per second of uh, transfer and if we want to use two channels we need 256 uh, megabits per second of communication between the uh, uh, caribou light to the raspberry pi currently in the standard configuration we are strobing soe and w uh, uh, right enable uh, signals for two clock cycles each clock cycle is 128 25 megahertz and the data length as we said before is 8 bits we could use 16 bits but we do not have enough ios for that so we used 8 bits uh, and so the potential uh, uh, in this configuration is uh, 333 megabits per second of uh, continuous stream of course we need to take into account that uh, they are um, the read and write operation they share the same uh, data um, uh, bus so uh, if we want to read two streams or we want to read one stream and write the other stream or uh, anything such uh, inside so any other uh, configuration uh, they will share the same address and the uh, data lines uh, which is okay because the modem itself is half duplex so we don't want to transmit and receive in the same time uh, the channel configuration takes time so every time we want to transmit information or to transmit a batch of information from the DMA uh, we need to configure the address of the information that we want to transmit so uh, there are a few addresses let's say if we want to transmit to, to the sub 1 gigahertz uh, and we want to uh, uh, and then we want to switch to uh, 2.5 2.4 gigahertz uh, channel uh, so we will have to switch between the addresses between them and uh, the same thing happens when we want to read uh, of course the next uh, next generation will use 16-bit data data so we'll be able to uh, have higher throughput on this uh, on this um, uh, interface and of course if you are uh, leading a project and this project needs uh, high throughput information running between the hat and the raspberry pi it's something that you can uh, also consider 16-bit data uh, which is wider two times wider so two times faster So now let's look at uh, at the um, uh, logic analyzer and see how these two lines look: the data request on one hand and the uh, SOE or OE signal on the other hand. Uh, let's say that uh, the modem is pushing uh, samples to the FPGA. Uh, once the samples are pushed into the FPGA, the FPGA uh, rises the data request data request it is telling the raspberry pi soc the broadcom soc okay the fpga has got something inside the fifo let's read it so of course one sample is 32 bits because it uh, it contains two uh, short two shorts like uh, two words of uh, i one i and y one q each 13 bits and another there are another flags inside it so every every sample is 32 bits of information 32 bits in order to read it you need 
uh, four transactions of eight bits. So here it goes. This is the signaling of the FPGA to the Raspberry Pi that, uh, okay, we got a sample and then Raspberry Pi, a DMA engine uh, runs this um, uh, SOE signal and strobes first for the for the MSB and then the other byte and then the other byte and then the other byte. So each batch, such batch contains four transactions of parallel eight bits and then it waits because it, uh, there is no other request and then up comes another request and again the same thing uh, and um, that's it. Uh, uh, currently as you can see this is running on 333 megabits per second uh, every potentially 333 we don't use it because we don't have enough information on the transmitting side on the modem side but if we could squeeze all these SOE uh, waves signals together you could get uh, 333 megabits of transactions and of course in the next evolution uh, we can uh, uh, transmit over 16 bits so we'll get higher uh, bandwidths. Another thing is that here uh, actually we will be we will need to lower the uh, potential transmission rate or a more more accurately control it so that uh, we could control we can control the EMI the electromagnetic emissions from the board so uh, if you don't need such a fast interface don't use it you don't need it you don't use it uh, and uh, of course it depends on the DP RAM the dual port RAM uh, performance reaction times uh, of, uh, of the uh, FPGA we will see it in the next slide so here is the block diagram of the uh, final data pass that is inside the uh, SMI control and all the rel related uh, controllers inside the firmware. First we have the LVDS uh, inputs. Here we have the sub 1 gigahertz, the 2.5 gigahertz and the LVDS clock. And on the transmitter side we have LVDS data and LVDS clock. Let's look at this part. We got a DPRAM. We call this DPRAM a complex number Q because this DPRAM contains two RAMs inside it, one for the I and one for the Q samples. And we have three of it, three of these uh, RAMs, one for the sub one gigahertz, one for 2.5, and then we have one for the TX side. Uh, the red marks here, they are changeable, they are uh, generics inside the firmware. And here we have the SMI controller that controls everything. So uh, once uh, there is information, let's look at here. Once the uh, information is pushed into the DPRAM, uh, this signal, empty signal, is goes uh, goes low, and then the SMI controller knows that it needs to uh, signal uh, a read request from the uh, from the Raspberry Pi, and then the Raspberry Pi understands that it's it has to read. He signals through the SMI SOE signal that he wants to read and then the SMI controller pulls uh, information samples from the FIFO. These samples are reflected on this 32-bit uh, register that are uh, uh, segmented into four transactions, SMI transactions, and that's the machine that works uh, and that's how it works 
to uh, com to transmit information from the caribou to the raspberry pi the same thing happens on the tick side and actually this model of uh, operation is not very complicated so it can be used by other projects uh, the code exists the uh, linux drivers also exist uh, and uh, we are testing them and there are some some bugs in the linux driver but with bad drivers but i, I think in a, a few evolutions that uh, these bugs will be eliminated so uh, if you have your own project and you want to to experience and experiment using the smi interface uh, you can also use uh, caribou light because caribou light is not a bad a, a FPGA development um, um, board so you can use it also for uh, experimenting and testing for the uh, for different interfaces in particular I think this is the only uh, board currently in the market that gives you the full SMI control uh, 8-bit control of uh, in, inside the FPGA from the Raspberry Pi uh, that's it. I, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, that it was uh, informative. More information is in our GitHub and uh, don't hesitate to ask questions and we will answer them or we'll make uh, another tutorials in order to, uh, to clarify uh, your points. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.